Hello, welcome back. We are excited to be here with you again for our segment after the five. It's June 15th, 2018. There was a ton of great stories this week, you guys. Before we get started, I do want to give a call out to our sponsor, Uberall. Uberall converts mobile sales through the power of location marketing across all of a retailer's platforms. Contact Uberall today to maximize revenue across your locations everywhere. All right, you guys, like I said, tons of great stories. Where do we even start? I mean, from your mind, your perspective, throw it out there. We had Microsoft and Walmart. We had Lori buying $44 million apartment in New York. We had Macy's and Beta. We had Curbside getting acquired. Like so many different things. Amazon's getting into the beauty space with a kind of indie mall shop. Like where's your guys' heads? I'm just curious. Like of those things, what 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 spoke to you this week? Well, should we save the uh, $44 million apartment to the very end? I think so. so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that was not really retail related. That yeah. was, was just more society related. I was thinking the exact opposite. Related. I was like, maybe we, we should just, just get that out of the way, yeah, right. and then we can go on to the more important news of the week. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll keep the listener hooked. Or okay. the, the listener and the watcher, actually. There you go. Podcast and video. <laughs> All right, well, let's just jump uh, in with Microsoft, then. Yeah, start with Microsoft. Yeah. All right, start at the yeah. top. All right, yeah, what'd you guys think? So, so for the audience, Microsoft, Walmart, it sounds like it's rumored to be embarking upon a partnership to go after Amazon Go, st- uh, an Amazon's Go style business. So a checkout free experience. So the raise for checkout free grocery, especially, well, talk- sounds like it's on. Yeah. Talk Carter, about what best- do you well, think? I was going to say, talk about the best partner ever, right? With like mm-hmm. Microsoft being able to jump into the mix and adding that power to whatever Walmart ecosystem they're going to jump into. Mm-hmm. I'm just super excited to see that Walmart is reaching outside of their walls to bring in a partnership like this. Right. And I think it's going to speed it up. It's going to give it more, uh, I would say, a foundational element rather than trying to do something themselves and i'm excited just to see what it's gonna what it's gonna bring right know? and like you said earlier i think if you've been to any of microsoft's retail experience centers they're really incredible and the stable of partners that they have under their umbrella that are really going to mm-hmm. bring walmart the, the highest quality in and uh of partner vendor partner and then also you know if you're looking at competitively if there's anybody that's going to take on amazon as they keep expanding and you know go beyond Chicago and San Francisco and are opening more Amazon Go stores, I think this partnership is ripe to do that. Yeah, it's just, I mean, I think when you think of retail historically, it's always been founded on a physical platform, right? That's how retailers operate. That's been bricks and mortar. But now you're talking about what is the technology platform on which retail operates. And if Walmart and a Microsoft can figure that out for the rest of the country, as Amazon's trying to do, then that's got to be valuable to both of them. So right. totally. like, to you guys' point, I mean, it's... it's mm-hmm. It's super, super interesting. Um, who would you bet on, Walmart or Amazon? I think it would be an easy answer <laughs> for two weeks ago, but now that this story has emerged over the last couple of days and you covered it, I think, really well in both your written piece this week and in the Fast Five video. Um, but I think, like I said, I, I mean, like I am just so pumped about this partnership yeah, and me too. bringing in the power that Microsoft is able to bring. Like, I don't think I'm able to answer that right now because yeah. cause I think it, it, it brings that X factor that mm-hmm. Walmart needed to compete and I'm mm-hmm. excited to see what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's hard to make a call now. I think early bets might say Amazon, but um, I don't know. I believe in Microsoft and and. I believe in Walmart. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, that it, out loud. This but. one's weird, right? Like, as you guys are, it's like, it's hard to actually say this, but actually, like, as I'm sitting here, I'm like, I actually might bet on Walmart here because it's such a physical experience. Mm-hmm. And so you have these years of knowing how people want to shop. The other interesting thing about Go is like, what happens as the size of your basket scales up to? And what does that mean for this technology? And Walmart has a ton of experience, like understanding how all those physical dynamics work. So, I don't and, know. I might and, actually give the edge to Walmart on this one. And physical store locations that are yeah, and they, yeah. open and exist. Right. Totally. Yeah. Now, how they deploy it will be really interesting. Right. Right? Right. Is it part of the core? Is it off, sure, an sure. offshoot somewhere else? But yeah, I don't know. This one, usually you never would not pick against Amazon. But this one, I don't I, I, I don't know. This this is different. It's fun to see. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm. Let's just roll the dice here. I'm just going to go kind of off the top of my head. How about curbside? I know so you've got some experience with curbside, right, Carter? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. I, I okay. did some research into license plate readers, um, which are just cameras that can say, here are the six digits of the plate that's rolling up. Now, you know, I don't know a ton about the technology behind the curbside service, but mm-hmm. I think what they're offering is absolutely incredible. And I think mm-hmm. you mentioned it in the Fast Five today. It's like, 
um, you know, offering to maybe some of these higher end retailers who are stuck within malls or stuck within places and giving them the service they're not able to duplicate mm -hmm. um, on their own. And I think it's, it's genius. I love it. It's really cool. And you've done, now you've actually, you and I actually trialed this yeah. quite a few times, you and I ourselves. Like, yep. what, maybe talk I to mean, the I mean, it's a great audience. experience. And at the time, I believe they were using beacons in sure. order to determine your location, but it was fast it was easy there was no i mean we tried it several times and every time we got exactly what we wanted the awesome. people were very personable and i think it does um, open up some some really great opportunity for some of the mall um uh stores too as as you were talking about um and i would think that there's got to be some scale too if it, if curbside isn't just pulling for one store at the mall and now they're pulling from several locations that um, that that's a greater value to the to the mall yeah. visitor too. Yeah, so, that's a good point. Um, yeah, it's a great service. I, I know that par this partnership is also going into some food delivery options mm -hmm. too, which mm -hmm. will you know, as we know, is becoming more and more common. And millennials yep. are spending more on you know takeout food, and so uh, I think it'll be interesting to see where mm -hmm. where the partnership leads them. Yeah, that's a great point. I thought about this. Yeah, the scale in the malls too. Like, if you can get a lot of people, it's interesting. Well, the mall operator. I'm surprised the mall operators haven't gone for this more to create mm -hmm. more of that like concierge type element. Yeah, like the actual mall the owners like Simon and those yeah, guys. Yeah, right. like offering as a service for you coming on. You know, they'll they'll do marketing for the retailers that are in there, but like, why why not offer this or they'll yeah. do other mm -hmm. things too? But and they yeah. do some of that at the holidays. Some people right. will, yeah. but I mean, to expand this to a year round mm -hmm. thing just makes so much sense, especially for people in climates that mm -hmm. end with people with kids who don't right. want to get out of the yeah, car and car. pick up yeah. a few things, you know? Yeah. And so. it's, it's interesting about where things will go. Like, and, and can the architecture change to like accommodate that type of thing mm -hmm. within the malls? And so fulfillment yeah. can be processed easily from those retailers to that, that hub or that and spot. returns, right? You know, yeah, they partner the with the happy returns or something yep. so that your curbside is all pick up and returns in the same spot. You got to imagine some of these malls have some extra space maybe they'd be able to spare right? yeah yeah I don't know yeah right you would, yeah, I don't know, yeah i don't know what would make us like that but yeah no I, yeah. no absolutely i mean that's a great point i mean i think it's cool because it's just a space i think kind of where we're getting to is it's it's, it's just for everyone that's listening and watching it's 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 a space to rush into and try mm -hmm. to figure out how to make something out of it totally. so i think mm -hmm. that's what i'm hearing from you guys okay cool yeah um all right uh let's do uh macy's beta what do you guys and I mean, this is, I, was, like this one a lot, I, I do think. like it because I, I'm finally seeing some glimmers of hope for Macy's with yeah, these Macy's last two partnerships. Yeah, Macy's has turned around the last couple weeks. I mean, earlier in the year, it was lines on lines on lines um, as innovation, <laughs> which I was yeah. like, God, She's referring Macy's. to mobile checkout, not anything in the drug <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, industry. Oh but God. Yeah, but yeah. It's yeah. not going there. Yeah, mobile checkout creating more lines than actually. Like right. Tender. Yeah. So I think that I'm encouraged by the caliber of the partners that they're bringing in. I think it could be the, a really smart move for them. I think, you know, bringing somebody in like Beta who has a technology platform and is selling electronics, which I think is another reason to bring people into stores. Um I think that they could turn around and, and if they can, like you said, you know, there's some legacy um, retailer infrastructure that Macy's has has, and that I think will be a challenge for people like Beta and Story who are used to turning over concepts pretty mm -hmm. quickly. Right. It'll be a challenge for them to, to get over. But I think that um, it's the right direction. And if anything is going to save Macy's at this point, this is a good a good road to go down. Let, let me let me ask you that specifically. Yeah. I was actually having this conversation with Robin Lewis today. Name drop. Uh, <laughs> and we were talking about that point exactly. Like, the the moves recently with Macy's seem to make a lot of sense. Like they're mm -hmm. trying to push in what seem like really good directions. Story now beta. Right. Can they even if it's good? Can they actually do it? Like can they turn the ship around, or is there just too much there built up in terms of its history, its culture, the legacy of their architect, all the debt they carry with them? Like what do you guys think? Like can they do it? I mean. It's hard because I guess I'm the, the the thing that kept coming to mind actually when I heard about the the beta um, partnership was actually what Walmart's been doing. And you look at Walmart and mm -hmm. how they're acquiring brands to really become this virtual mall. And so I think it feels like Macy's is is grasping at that kind of same thing to to reimagine the department store, right. reimagine what the mall experience is, and so. I think they're solving um, the inherent problem, right? Whereas and, Walmart is kind of doing something different, and we're not quite sure. Right? What it is. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. yeah. Yeah. So I think 
they're, I mean, it's kind of like they're bringing in all the cool kids and maybe we'll see kind of who else comes on board and you got two pretty big names there. And so yeah. can they, can they continue that momentum and then can that bring better ideas, um, mm-hmm. more innovative thinking to the organization and where will, where will that allow them to go at that point? I think as you, you know, it might be a slow transition, mm-hmm. but as you start to bring, uh, bigger, brighter minds into the mm-hmm. organization that are, th- uh, promoting a new way of thinking, I think there's some possibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Carter, what do you what do you think? I, I like the cool kids analogy. I think that was yeah. kind of good. It was like uh, this idea of it's probably easier to have cool friends and make new cool friends than try to become cool yourself. Right? <laughs> That's probably true. strategy I take on. So a it's lot. the can't it's buy just, me it, love strategy. Yeah, like have all my friends yeah. be really the, cool. What is his name? Ron. Yeah. Uh, no, Sorry, I think I think it's cool. I mean, I just go back to my Mason's experience, which I think I've griped about before on this platform right. a little bit. Like yeah. you know, going yeah, to get a suit for my friend's wedding, and the guy brings out and blows off the dust of a big three ring binder. And then, you know, types on this black and white, like archaic point of sale system that's just, you know, yeah, so you talk yeah. about, and you, and you were mentioning this in your fast five too. It's like maybe this new acquisition or maybe this new blood or the cool kids that are coming into the market are able to quickly turn around or take on something new yeah. rather than trying to slowly change from within. Um, I mean, everything from my personal experience to really the good take Anne had on mobile checkout and everything, it's like I, I can only see going up from here. Like I, I feel that we have just been beating Macy's so hard um, in terms of like just how, how bad the experience mm-hmm. is. So I'm just excited to see some new blood in there, mm-hmm. some new cool friends that could potentially mm-hmm. change that world. Yeah. That's why I love doing this. No, I think, yeah. Like, I guess if I step back from it, listening to you guys, it's, they're making all the right moves. Mm-hmm. Like actually in the last month, they've made a lot of really smart moves. Then the question becomes, can they do it? Sure. Right. And, those are two really different things, actually. I think the proof for me is when I see them actually really try to create an entirely new experience instead of trying to incrementally get to it over time do you think by it's adding in these their, things into their stores. Do you think it's going to happen in their stores? I don't know. I personally think it's a really hard thing to do to get to stepwise. Sure. Mm-hmm. I think you have to kind of step outside the box and really create something entirely different. And then I use the word molting, but molt that into the organization over time. Like once you find that successful recipe, sure. then start taking that into your, your store base or your cap, you know, which is quite honestly incredibly capital intensive and hard for any upstart to do because it's hard to acquire real estate. And Macy's has all that already. So I think that's a smart move. If I see them start to do that, where they say, hey, we're going to take these collection of parts, mm-hmm. story, beta, everything else, sure. and really create an entirely new enchilada, so to speak and play with that until we get it right and then bring that entirely into the organization. I think that's cool. I think they're trying to do that with their store 50 initiative or whatever I think they call it, their growth 50 initiative. Yeah. But um, yeah, but maybe they can. I mean, maybe they can pull that off. I think it's harder that way, but I don't know. They, I'm, I'm starting, they're starting to kind of tick back up here. Do you think that this is like the Trojan horse though? Like if beta and story together, I mean, what if Macy's starts to buy space that's just the beta and story concept and they start doing smaller format stores and those like do well and people are going to those. And then could the Macy's like legacy organization be like, oh, this makes sense. And it doesn't cost as much money to have this much space and to operate. I mean, out of that, I wonder if they have the the ability to. Yeah, could be a good new business. You're still right. saddled with all the old legacy business right. that would probably die out in that instance. But yeah, it's it, at least you're getting something out of that for sure. Maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, it's hard to know, right? Like, it's hard to know. Um, wow, interesting. By the way, random aside, what's the name of the character of of Patrick Dempsey and Can't Buy Me Love? Because that's a really good analogy. So it's Macy's is basically no the idea. Can't Buy Me Love strategy. If you're listening, you're watching. Yeah. It's Ronald something. So. Message us, text us. I can't remember it off the You're top of my head. You're the only one of us. It's that driving me crazy. Yeah, I'm but, uh, I mean, it's such a great film. Filmed in Arizona, by the way. Um, cool. All right. Lastly, um, let's talk about Mark Lori. Forty-four million dollars for a Manhattan apartment. Sounds like a cool new place. Yeah. But I mean, you had your own what do, opinion on it. What do you guys think? Well, I'll, I'll save my opinions. What do you guys think on this? Sam one? Walton would be rolling in his grave right now. I mean, it's awful. That's a great point. Like, I hadn't thought about it. It's a great point. He, he, he. He's a he's a, an icon for a company that was based on very hardworking, salt of the earth people, and I just think that this is not the image that I would portray if I were him. But I mean, it's a nearly nine thousand square foot apartment. Jennifer Lawrence seems cool. She'd probably be an awesome neighbor. And to your point, that now Jet Black totally makes sense. Totally I makes told sense. you last yeah. week when we were talking about this, this, I was like. 
This is Mark finally Lori something he will yeah. use. Yeah. And now we have proof. Yeah, you're right. You that he actually it. is one of the. Uh, he's on the list. Yeah, you call. Yeah, he's. Yeah, he's probably customer number one. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get what you're saying, and I think uh, the Sam Walton thing is a perfect, uh, you know, comparison. Like, you know, what would he think, and how are mm-hmm. you comparing to your shoppers, and how are you, you know, doing that? I guess um, the question is, is like, you know, how in tune uh, is the general public to maybe the story outside of the industry? I guess mm-hmm. would be my the devil's advocate on this story mm-hmm. is, you know, people who are shopping at Walmart, you know, and including us too. It's like, mm-hmm. um, granted, we are in the industry, we're talking about it, and we keep our ear to the ground. But how many people in the public know? you know, where he lives or how much it costs or that he's even running the ship, I guess would be um, the devil's advocate. But at the same time, like when you look at the core values of a company being uh, really you know, radiated by the leadership, I think it does, that, that point might not even matter. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe the average Walmart customer might not know who this person is or the types of apartments he's buying. But at the end of the day, uh, if you have someone in such a leadership role who's embodying this image, mm-hmm. uh, it can't be good for the organization as a whole. Yeah, I I love that. I mean, to me, like, just the cosmetics of it just don't totally. don't smell right to me, right? Like you've got, and I, I I I can remember hearing this statistic very poignantly at one time. That I think twenty percent of households make over a hundred thousand dollars a year, right? So that means you know eighty percent don't mm-hmm. make that, right? Yeah. And so you know when you're when you're America's store, basically mm-hmm. like Walmart is. And you're sitting out in New York on the coast when we're really talking about middle America, that that's a weird cosmetic look to have out there in the marketplace, I think. Yeah. Like, is that the really the reputation you want to have? And shoppers have so many options now. I got to think over time, like, how are you going to stay connected to them? They are going to get wind of it somehow with social media and that kind of thing. Like, I just think it's a really strange move. And also, what does it mean for his long... I, the, and we didn't talk, we haven't talked about this yet, mm. but like his long-term commitment. Sure. Like, is he really going to be there? Or is right. this is this like another signal that maybe things are afoot, like is typical after a big acquisition, mm-hmm. like sure, they sure. went through when they acquired Jet, even though they've been saying that, hey, yeah, everything's great. We love each other. Big yeah. bromance between right. Doug and, and Mark. I don't know. I mean, on one hand, maybe they're trying to keep him. And this was yeah, like a, a, a term where, where it was want, like, if you want to live in New York, you go live in New York. You just have to stay on with mm-hmm. us and see us through this period. But what I still don't understand either is this made major news. Like this was not just retail news. That's this true. was in yeah. the Wall Street Journal. Right. This was in several like Business Insider and in several yep. publications, not retail specific. And how many other CEOs do we know about that have bought? I mean, they all have uh, multiple yeah, places, I don't know what but other why is it newsworthy? Have, yeah. So I think that hmm. that's another question it's that a I... To how big of a deal it might be. Right. Yeah. Well, or again, they've been so much on the PR bandwagon. It makes me wonder actually who's planning the stories too as you bring <laughs> this up. Like we've got VR galas in Beverly Hills. They're in the PR news every other week with some yeah. type of story. And now this makes the PR... You're right. I can't tell you where any other CEO in America lives. He's yeah. not even the CEO. Like where's this come... That's fascinating. Wow. God, I love doing this. Like this is so <laughs> fascinating. All right, cool. All right, anything else, you guys? Anything else top of your minds? Happy Father's Day. Oh, hey, thank yeah, you very much. You thank you very much. Yeah, Not only I'm does excited. Chris put this on every week, but he's also he's a dad. Also a dad. <laughs> yeah. And that's great. His yeah, kids are filming this right now. Yeah. Thank you get them to work for us. Yeah, it's, it's really exactly nice. Right. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah, we got them working behind the camera, <laughs> yeah. working the sound, but... Um, but hey, yeah, thanks. Thank you guys for that. That's awesome. And, and happy Father's Day to all of you guys that are listening or watching. Um, and happy, you know, belated Mother's Day to everyone, too. I think we can never say that enough. Um, but as always, from me, from Anne, from Carter, be careful out there. <laughs>